Hello and welcome to another Victoria 3 Developer Diary. This day we're going to be talking all about migrations and how migration works from the old world to the new world or vice versa. Who knows? We'll find out in a moment. First of all, though, we're going to have a look at this lovely piece of artwork, uh, which is very on point and thematic to today's Dev Diary, showing a bunch of people either leaving or arriving via big floaty boaty boy. Uh, again, I always just like to show off these pieces of art at the start of the videos because they are just that awesome. I love them. I love them to bits. But anyway, before we get into the Dev Diary with uh, migrations, we have a couple more things to talk about, and that is, first of all, the new Twitter teaser from Groogy, who has been doing a bunch of the uh, state modifiers, and this time we're going to be looking at the Mediterranean, the Terra Rossa, or Red Soil, which exists in various parts of the world. The most famous places for it are on the Dalmatian coast, we'll get it in uh, Victoria 3, in Apulia and Istria, all the way to Dalmatia. So having a look at this, the modifier is 15% agriculture throughput, so I'm making this area very uh, wealthy in grain, which is very historically accurate as far as I am aware. Lovely stuff. Terra Rossa. We also have a new Twitter teaser from Martin talking about uh, migration. Uh, you can see that New York is receiving a great deal of immigration. Where do we think it's coming from? While there is nothing on here, that I can see at least, that shows where that migration is coming from, there is a couple of things that is worth looking at. First of all, uh, there is new icons for some impoverished and secure um, standards of living, which is very nice. They're much cleaner, much easier to read, so that's always nice to see. And also, it used to be impoverished, middling, and then secure. It's changed to impoverished, secure, and affluent. Uh, good change. It's a good change. And um, as Martin later clarified in another, uh, another tweet, uh, this um, migration is actually coming from Brittany in France. So maybe if, uh, if France is having a few troubles, maybe the um, their wars against Germany are not going so well. Maybe the Bretons are going to be fleeing to the New World. But anyway, that's enough of that. Let us get on to the Dev Diary itself. Hello and welcome to yet another Victoria 3 Dev Diary. Today's topic is migration, meaning the movement of pops between states. What role it plays in Victoria 3 and how it functions mechanically. There are two types of migration in Victoria 3. Intra-market migration and mass migration. And we'll be explaining both of these starting with intra-market migration. It's the movement of pops between two states that are part of the same market. Barring certain exceptions, such as slaves not being able to migrate, as covered in the previous dev diary, pops are generally always able to move between states in the market, though the number of individuals that are able to change their homes on a weekly basis varies between, based on factors such as their local infrastructure and market access in the two states. I would say there should be a, another, another limiting factor on this, because if you think about it, um the the island of britain uh the you know the british isles in general and india share a market so migration from india to britain is intra market migration um if pops are always able to move between states in the market you would imagine that the demographics of britain would be very much different um, if a lot of Indian pops are able to migrate to the UK. And that's not to say that Indian pops, or Indian people, I should say, didn't migrate to the UK, but it wasn't in a colossal amount. And considering the population difference between the two countries today and during the, the time period here, um, if there is a just a basic freedom of movement between India and the UK, you would end up with a very ahistorical amount of migration. So hopefully there is more than just infrastructure and market access um, that dictates how many pops can move uh, every week. Anyway, moving on. Which pops migrate from and to what states depending on the migration attraction of each state? Migration attraction is a value that is based on the average standard of living in the state. And again, in this period, and to a lesser extent but still very true today, the standard of living in 
the British Isles is higher than the standard of living in India. So the migration attraction in the British Isles is going to be very, very high in comparison to this vastly populated land in India. And you can tell I'm trying to like dance around some words to make it, you know, a bit because it's, it's, it's an awkward thing to talk about, right? It is awkward, but I hope I'm doing okay. Um, modified by various factors such as over or underpopulation, unemployment and available jobs, and so on. It is possible for a country to directly encourage migration to a specific state through the Greener Grass Campaign Decree at the cost of some authority. In general, POPs will move from states with a low standard of living and lack of employment opportunities to states with a high standard of living and jobs to offer. States with low population compared to the amount of available land are especially attractive to economic immigrants. Um, this, this here would be the the thing I, I think that would would prevent mass migration from um, India to the UK. Um, there, there is a high density population in the UK, um, not as dense as in India, but there is a high density. And there is very little available land, comparatively. So potentially that is how the, the limit is going to be made here. Um, and lack of employment opportunities in this period, there was many opportunities for employment in the UK, as there, I mean, this is the, the period of industrialization, like ramping that up to the max. So jobs were plentiful. Um, but that, that basically means that we're going to get this, there are going to be jobs to offer, there are, is a high standard of living, uh, but hopefully this is going to limit it somewhat. Um, I mean, it's all, it's all to do with numbers and, and how those numbers are tweaked, so we, we all have to wait and see. Um, Kansas is already an attractive state for American settlers due to its sparse population. It's been further prioritized for migration through the use of the Greener Grass Campaign Decree. So, Greener Grass Campaign Decree gives you plus 50% um, migration attraction. Uh, you get 85.95% from sparsely populated, or at least Kansas does. Um, uh, so it has a high migration attraction compared to the average of 11.5 in the American market. May receive immigrants from other states in the American market. Very nice indeed. And Kansas also has some undiscovered um, goods as well, either oil or gold or something like that. Lovely. Uh, so yeah, there's probably going to be quite a lot of... Oh, also, the standard of living is in there as well. So yeah, it's, uh, we're going to have to have a look at what these things are, because if you think about the UK and India example, we're going to have standard of living be quite high, there's, you're probably not going to be using Greener Grass Campaign, I would imagine. Um, it's not sparsely populated, so this isn't going to be there. So maybe the migration attraction of the UK is only going to be something like 10, 12, something like that. So, yeah, that makes sense. Okay. Discrimination 2 plays a role in migration. Okay, there we go. Found it. F found, found the limit. Found the limit. Pops that are being discriminated against in a particular state and have the opportunity to migrate to another state in that market, where would they not be discriminated against, perhaps because of multiple countries sharing the same market, and one of those countries having more liberal citizenship or religious laws, will take that opportunity in greater numbers, provided, of course, that there is an underlying economic reason for them to want to move there in the first place. After all, while enjoying voting rights is certainly nice, putting food on the table is higher on the agenda for most Pops. So, yeah, um, while this isn't about... You won't migrate to a place because they're, you're being discriminated get there. It's If you're already in that place, you would like to leave. I imagine the opposite way is true as well. There. Discrimination can also have the opposite effect. Pops that are already enjoying full citizen rights are generally going to need to be in pretty dire economic straits to consider moving somewhere where those rights are going to be taken away. Indians moving to the UK. Uh, in that case of a pop that is going to be discriminated against, no matter where they go in the market, they tend to stick to their cultural homelands. Makes sense, for sure. Okay, lovely. So, French colonial settlement policies means that their colony in Algiers receives a steady trickle of immigrants from mainland France every week. How many are we getting here? We've got a state population of 1.08 million. Uh, the growth is 
about 10,000 a year, but the migration is around 29,000 a year. It has a high migration attraction, 22.2, in comparison to the 22.8 of Kansas. Um, the average is 11.3 in the French market. It will receive immigrants from other states in the French market. It receives 556 immigrants from Corsica, Piedmont, and Provence. All of those places, I'm not going to list them all out. Um, you can also see the, the breakdown. There's how many peasants, how many unemployed, fertility rates, mortality rates, all that kind of good stuff. All right. Anything else to glean from here? I don't think so. All right, lovely stuff. So what then of mass migration? Mass migration is a mechanic introduced to try and model the migration of large amounts of people to places such as the US, Brazil, and Australia in the 19th century. Mass migration can happen when a particular culture experiences turmoil, which is a product of having a large number of radicalized pops. A culture that has enough turmoil to meet the threshold has a chance to create a migration target somewhere in the world, which is a flag set in a particular state that attracts huge numbers of migrants from that culture over the course of a limited time span to that state and any states neighboring it. Migration targets are more likely to be created if the pops in the culture have low standard of living and high literacy, and particularly likely to be created if there is widespread starvation among the pops of that culture. The selection of states for migration targets is based on a number of factors, including the state's migration attraction, whether or not the culture is legally discriminated against in the country, and if there is a logical path that pops of the migrating culture would be able to follow from their homelands to the target, such as trade routes. There is no inherent advantage in certain country tags for who gets migrants. The US tends to get migrations because of the availability of jobs and land combined with liberal citizenship laws, not because they have a built-in migration attraction bonus. This is awesome. This is really, really nice to see, and it, it is very much reminiscent of the way that they're also handling the U.S. Civil War, right? There is no scripted, the U.S. is going to have a civil war and it's going to start at this time, and there is no scripted, the U.S.A. is going to have a bunch of migrants and it's going to happen at this time, because the game don't need it. The game do modeling very nicely the factors which encourage those events, instead of... A flag of yeah no we're gonna we're gonna do the migration thing now it's it's just natural and that is something really really awesome to see um it also means that if you are saying for example brazil and you manage to say i mean let's let's not use brazil as an example because they use brazil here let's say for example you're use you're playing as mexico right um and you're like, oh, the U.S. always gets these, you know, high migration things. In the previous game that I played, the U.S. got so many pops from migration. I know why they got so many pops from migration, because they had, you know, high standard of living. Uh, they had um, availability of jobs. They had uh, amount of land. They had liberal citizenship laws. What if I tailor my country to get these things in effect, right? What if I liberalize my citizenship laws? What if... I um, do a little bit of industrial planning so that I have an available amount of jobs. Um, what if I increase the standard of living? All these kind of things to raise the migration attraction. And then, oh, now I'm the target of migration. Um, I get, you know, the migration target on a bunch of my states. And now I'm the one that's getting uh, millions of extra uh, people coming to my land instead of the USA. And now I'm in a stronger position than the USA. Fantastic. Having it be natural as a as a gameplay mechanic rather than a a scripted event is something I absolutely adore and I think uh, should be used more liberally everywhere else as well that it, that it's possible because it is just a better way of doing things in my opinion. So, fed up with economic hardship and political oppression in their homelands, a large group of Polish people have decided to try their luck at a new life in France. And seemingly, it is not even a new world only thing, which is perfect. Um, France itself can become the target of um, migration, tar uh, yeah, a target of migrations. So, yeah, say you're Britain, I want a higher population in Britain. I need, you know, people to come and work in my factories that I can tax and all that. Set up the right conditions and you may be 
um, you know, the, the recipient of a migration target, which is going to be really good for you. Fantastic stuff. There's one more aspect of migration that we're only going to briefly touch on, migration policy. This is a group of laws which lets you set the stance of your country on migration. For example, whether you want to promote the movement of people from your core lands to your colonies, attract skilled workers from other countries for your manufacturing economy, or even just minimize all migration, external and internal, as a way of maintaining your iron grip over the population. The reason we won't be going into this today is because it's currently in the process of being redesigned to this end. Uh, from a previous much simpler set of laws. So we'll return to it at a later time. Lovely stuff. With that said, reach the end of the dev diary, and in fact the current string of political dev diaries, as next week we'll be changing the focus from inwards to outwards and talking about diplomacy. Yes! Diplomacy, fantastic. Uh, when you think of Victoria... Well, 2, because we don't really think of much of Victoria 3 at the moment, because the game's not out. Think of Victoria 2 and what the, the main pillars, I guess, of the game are. Pops economy and diplomacy are like the three major pillars of that game so moving on to the third of those pillars is fantastic news i'm very much looking forward to that utterly brilliant um and on the topic of prestige and rank which we already know is not going to be the same as victoria 2's so yeah definitely looking forward to that but that is not all we have more to talk about because there are developer comments and we'll turn that off we'll turn that on and now let's have a read so is sparsely populated in that kansas screenshot generically dy uh, generated dynamically does the game divide pop size by the actual land area in a state to determine a population density yes it's based on the proportion of population versus arable land which we've seen before lovely okay um what those ratios are obviously we don't know at this point is it possible for mass migration to change the base culture and religion of a developing country? Can a devastating war in the Italian peninsula make it so that, for example, Argentina becomes an Italian country on paper culturally? So, no. Countries have a fixed primary culture, one or several, and this does not change other than if the country's definition changes. For example, through forming a new nation. More context here. Is there another comment? We'll have a look at that now after we read this bit. Discrimination laws effects are measured against the country, uh, the primary cultures, so a large population of non-primary culture immigrants may demand equal treatment or pack up and move elsewhere, or even demand self-governance under certain conditions. Um, so discrimination laws are a bit more granular than just primary versus others, and together with the two discrimination vectors, culture and religion, can create quite a bit of detail. Being able to effectively target your cultural management with finer legal instrument than that is both unrealistic and not particularly meaningful in terms of what it adds to the gameplay. Having said that, it's well worth noting that our decision to make primary cultures static to a country tag is very intentional. In addition to being set in the revolutionary, uh, revolutionary era, Victoria 3 also sets the era of nationalism and the notion of that culture equals country. Natural cultural homelands, pan-national sentiments, and so on are important themes. So in Victoria 3, cultural and country are intrinsically connected as to be nonsensical in this era for a nation state to change its primary cultures while still retaining its fundamental national identity. I would agree with that. I can't see, uh, I mean, I can't see a situation where, oh, you know what is a great example of this um, is the USA, right? The USA, culturally, they're English speaking and they're religiously let's just wave it away as protestant right there's a lot of other religions in there but the majority is especially in this period english speaking and protestant and the the genesis of that country is as a colony of the united kingdom or great britain at the time so there, if if they hadn't changed their 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 culture definition to be American, like they originated as English or British, and then it changed to American over time. But with that said, what is the largest group of people that immigrated to the USA? What is the what is the the culture or the background or the ethnicity or the whatever you want to call it? Um, that the majority of Americans have to this day. It ain't English. It's German. So, in this time period, more Germans migrated to the USA than British people. 
and more Germans migrated to the USA than there were Americans at the start, right? Uh, when when it was a British colony. So that's why there is more people of German descent than there are of, of British descent. Of course, there's melting pot and all that, so it's you know it's all mixed now, and it's it's very non. It, it means nothing at this point, uh, despite what um, genealogy.com or whatever the fuck they're called wants you to think. All right, it, it's it's practically meaningless. But the USA didn't change their their culture tag here. They, they didn't change their primary culture purely because um, of mass migration of Germans. So it makes sense to have a fixed primary culture here, even if a larger group ends up coming in. Um, but yeah, that's 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 as as good as I can put it there. Um, will shared language make it more likely for pops to migrate there? For example, Spaniards to Mexico, Brits to the USA, Portuguese to Brazil, etc. We haven't done our final pass on the factors that play into creating mass migration targets. Shared culture traits like language is one aspect we're looking at. We should also make it an ease of learning language as well, perhaps. Uh, how will culture work with pops that have migrated? Will they over time converge to the local culture? Will they create a hybrid? Will they maintain the old culture? What about cultural obsessions? How will they work overseas? So cultural assimilation and religious conversion are separate mechanics which we'll cover in a later dev diary, but these will often come into play after a migration wave. For as long as the pop retains their original culture, they will also be subject to that culture's consumption habits. So Brits moving to the USA will have a consumption habit of really liking tea. Which makes, I mean, it's it's perfectly historically accurate. Uh, we we do love ourselves a nice cup of tea, you know. It's it's just what we do. So, mass migration is based on cultures and not pops. Can turmoil in Russian Poland cause a mass migration for the Polish pops in Austria with sixty stand of living that are all loyalists as well? It's based on cultures, yes, but just because the migration target exists doesn't mean that all pops of that culture will automatically pull towards it. The well-to-do pops won't be interested in moving, even if the presence of the migration target means they technically could. Okay. Uh, it's nice to know. Nice uh, bit of clarification there. Does the average standard of living basis for pop migration apply to a general standard of living or on the basis of pop professions? Because I could envisage a scenario where there are extremely wealthy pops that would raise the balance, but other pops being worse off. Um, I, I don't think this matters so much, right? Because... If you again, let's go to the USA. They're the easiest uh, example of mass migrations in the world, right? Um, if you think about the US, a lot of people were in really shitty situations, right? If you think of uh, the the Chinese workers on the uh, transcontinental railroad, I think that's what they called it. They lived in fucking poverty. They were at, they were barely better than slaves. Um, the post emancipation black population was not much better off they were they had a, an awful time their their standard of living was absolute dog shit right but migrations from ireland from britain from germany poland um all these places that moved en masse to the usa didn't look at the people who had awful standards of living they looked at, you know, the American dream and they looked at anything's possible and all that kind of bullshit. And that's what they went for. They didn't go because, I mean, they didn't, they didn't not go because of the standard of living that they probably would have experienced had they moved. They went because they thought they could do better. So I don't think it matters that there are people with, you know, in abject poverty um, that shouldn't bring it down. The average is, is perfectly reasonable in that regard. Um, if there are enough wealthy pops to markedly increase the average, then the immigrant will be hearing about the glorious country overseas, where the streets are paved with gold scraped together enough to embark on this promised land, but perhaps find themselves stuck due to poor social mobility once they get there. Uh, yeah, no, I probably should have read this before I went on that little ramble, because it's basically exactly what I said. Just a bit better worded. Uh, but yeah, it's exactly the same, right? Um, they hear about the American dream. They go over there and they realize that, you know, they're not asleep. So the American dream doesn't exist. Um, yeah. 
I'd also like to know how war will affect migration. For example, if the American Civil War is much longer and more destructive than in real life, it would make sense for some of the more recent immigrants to decide maybe this freedom thing ain't so great after all and go back to their home countries. So war can have a number of del deleterious. I have never seen this word before in my life. Deleterious. Probably pronounced absolutely perfectly. First time, naturally. Uh, on a society simply due to emergent mechanics affecting the pops. We'll learn more about this in later dev diaries. This means that prolonged wars definitely can cause migration waves away from their war-torn country, or perhaps just shift the population away from the worst affected region to other parts of the market. So, you said there is a chance that migration target will be created. Let's say two states have the potential to become a migration target, and they have the exact same migration attraction and other factors are also the same. The chance will then be 50-50 on which of them becomes a migration target. Um, if they differ slightly and one is more attractive, will, in that case, the most attractive state definitely become the migration target, or is there still a chance that the other state will become the target? So it's determined by a weighted random, so if one is more attractive, it might have a 55% chance versus a 45% chance. So it's not just the best place gets it every time, which is good. Could some of those migration targets be the result of events or decisions? So yes, migration targets can be created via scripted effects through, for example, events. A couple of general answers we got here. Anything pertaining to encouraging or discouraging certain kinds of migration will be dealt with via the as of yet unfinished migration policy laws. When I mentioned a culture minority might sell, demand self-governance under certain conditions, I'm referring to the secession mechanics, which we'll talk about in the future. There's no direct interaction with pops in Victoria 3. All interactions are done through other mediums like buildings, interest groups, decrees, institutions, etc. Uh, similarly, there is no direct interactions with cultures or religions. For example, you're not able to ban or encourage migrations of pops of a specific culture. All such interaction is handled through citizenship and church and state laws, which determine if a pop is discriminated due to culture and or religion. It's this distinction between non-discriminated and discriminated pops that determines how specific policies work rather than selecting a specific policy for a specific kind of person. Not denying that this happened on occasion, but it's certainly less common and not on the level of granularity we want the game to operate on. Makes sense to me. Um, I mean, the, the only example of person of this religion or person of this culture is not allowed to come here is let's say very recent uh like in the past five years recent i can't think of any from this period um but you know that might just be my ignorance you know so we've considered and experimented with adjacency based migration in the past but ended up deciding not to have three distinct systems for migration in the game economic migration poor pops moving where jobs are is handled via market migration turmoil based migration for destitute or oppressed pops moving abroad is handled via mass migration while cross-border migration as well as a steady trickle of global migrants are certainly not a historical it's irrelevant for a player when the effect is very low and difficult to explain or do something about when it's already very high so we're not just going to get random like a few pops here or there it's either going to be um, economic migration or you know mass migration there's not going to be that little trickle Economic migration is usually something a player is happy for and can control to some degree with decrees, while mass migration is easier to signal and explain to the player and can be controlled with laws. The effects from other forms of migration are also less relevant to model and result in a lot of pop fracturing and performance problems for no major discernible benefit. Okay. There should either be multiple migration targets at a time. I think there are, yeah, there are several migration targets for a given culture at a time. Or a quick rotation of migration targets of one culture because it didn't happen that people of one culture emigrated to a single place over more than a few months. So yeah, there can be multiple simultaneous migration targets for a given culture depending on how high that culture's turmoil is. So imagine if there is um, basically all of Europe is in flames, World War I comes early and it's, it's, just, it's just dreadful. Uh, but Brazil has been real fucking sweet. Uh, the Brazil player has been growing his industry. He's been liberalizing he's been doing all of the right things the standard of living is through the roof it's to the moon and so you know many migration targets will pop up there many french ones german ones spanish ones british ones a bunch of migration targets all in brazil you're gonna be sitting pretty uh, i can imagine in, in multiplayer this is gonna be really nice for the one player who decides to stay out of the great war um it's gonna be pretty good for them 
Uh, are we going to get the starving ones? In the 19th century, lots of well-to-do people have emigrated, like British engineers and German activists. Is it going to be a mechanism that represents these minor flows of elite migrants? So they'll migrate if they see a benefit in doing so, either economic or political, so it depends on how relatively attractive the target country is to them. If I'm an autonomous subject, like Norway, Finland, Cuba, etc., I want, might want to make myself a very attractive economic or political place to live to attract the working class from elsewhere in the market, thus building myself to, uh, at the expense of my liege. Yes, one of the benefits of being in another country's market. Okay. Um, and this is... Yeah, we've already read this from here. Can mass migration be triggered by less dramatic circumstances than starvation? Italy during the second half of the 19th century experienced a very significant emigration towards America, yet despite widespread poverty, it wasn't so dramatic like the famine in Ireland. So mass migration is triggered by average turmoil in a culture, and turmoil in turn comes from radicalism and discrimination. Radicalism gets particularly high as pops that are starving. But for example, if most pops of a certain culture used to be really well off, but then became oppressed and a lot poorer in their current country or countries, this could cause a migration target for them to go elsewhere as well. And then finally, can migration cause a backlash at the destination? Or will this generally not happen because they'll probably pick somewhere with plenty of job openings? I mean, it definitely should happen. It definitely should happen. Um, but it emerges from the simulation. Backlash isn't something that's created by the migration itself, but rather emerging from the effects of that migration. If the people moving have a lot of radicals, uh, they're prone as they're prone to have since mass migration is triggered by high average turmoil in the culture, it will impact the state they're moving to, and by extension, also the other pops that live there. If the moving pops become non-discriminated in the provinces, sorry, in the process, and perhaps are able to fill job opportunities that in that increase their standard of living, this turmoil will dissipate quite rapidly, and it's unlikely to cause long-term problems. But if the immigrating pops continue to be oppressed and can't improve their living conditions in the new country, this could become a problem for everybody. Getting a little more granular about it, a major influx of potential labour with low expectations can depress wages by making it unnecessary for profitable buildings to raise their wage rates to increase their attractiveness. This could aggravate stratification of the owner and shareholder classes and the working class in the state, creating radicals among the local population. But on the other hand, this additional labour might be exactly what is needed to expand production of local staple goods, making it cheaper to satisfy those needs. So while migration waves will also have always have a substantial effect on your economy and therefore politics, the precise effect it will have comes down to the details and how you choose to deal with it. I love this. Always. We're not going to just make something happen, but we've set up the conditions that this thing can happen. It's such a it's such a refreshing way to see game development, right? It's 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 not something you see too much of and you know, emergent gameplay is something that is very successful in in other games and you know, I I I love that it's being brought into Victoria 3 in such a a pivotal way. It's fantastic. I'm I'm a big big fan but yeah that is the end of the dev diary um yeah no that's that's something really really nice to see it is something really really nice to see um i'm liking it i'd love to know what you guys think um because i can't see anything wrong with it like unlike the last dev diary where i, I had a few m minor nitpicks and such there's nothing in here that screams like oh no this is wrong this is bad you know, everything here seems to be on the level. And that's refreshing. Well, it's not refreshing, but it's 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 nice. But yeah, let me know what you guys think. Um, leave a comment down below. Leave a like if you liked the video. Sub if you want to see more Victoria 3 news and updates. And I will see you guys in the next video. Bye-bye for now.